Welcome back to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. In the first segment, we were talking about Kawhi Leonard's withdrawal from Team USA Basketball for the upcoming Olympics in Paris. As we get started with segment two, I do want to remind you once again to uh, go to gsmcpodcast.net. There you can leave a tip or a donation. That's going to put any question or comment that you have for us right at the top of our queue so that we are guaranteed to see it. We love engaging with those questions. So again, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. We are sticking, as I said earlier, with uh, the Olympics theme. We're moving on, though, to the recent game um, between Canada and USA. Team USA men's basketball team began its quest for a fifth consecutive Olympic gold medal with an 86-72 victory over Canada in Las Vegas. This exhibition game marked the debut of guard Derek White, who replaced forward Kawhi Leonard on the 12-man roster. Leonard withdrew to focus on preparing for the upcoming NBA season with the Los Angeles Clippers, given his chronic knee issues. Despite a slow start where Team USA missed its first six shots, the team found its rhythm in the second quarter, outscoring Canada 16-2 in the paint and leading 41-33 at halftime. Anthony Edwards led the team with 13 points, while Anthony Davis added a double-double with 11 points and 10 rebounds. RJ Barrett was Canada's top scorer with 12 points. The win over Canada, a formidable, formidable opponent projected to medal in the Paris Olympics, was a strong start for Team USA. The team will face Australia next in Abu Dhabi, continuing their pre-Olympic exhibition schedule. Analysts offered mixed reactions to the game. Tim Bontomp found the performance encouraging despite 17 turnovers and a disjointed offense, noting Team USA's dominance over a major challenger. Bobby Marks viewed the game as a good test, highlighting the importance of playing against a strong Canadian lineup in a packed arena. Um, Dave McMenamin emphasized the importance of defense and transition play, while Ohm Young, Young Masuk appreciated the team's potential despite a rusty start. The spotlight was also on Anthony Edwards, who asserted his position as a key player. Edwards' energy helped lift the team after a slow start, showcasing his potential to be a significant contributor, whether starting or coming off the bench. Kawhi Leonard's absence, while notable, was mitigated by the depth of talent on Team USA. With stars like Kevin Durant, Jason, T Jason Tatum, and LeBron James, and defensive stalwarts like Drew Holiday, the team remains a favorite for gold. Leonard's replacement, Derek White, brings elite perimeter defense and versatility crucial for the team's success. As Team USA continues its preparations, uh, the starting lineup remains a topic of discussion. And uh, analysts suggest a mix of Steph, excuse me, <clears throat> Steph Curry, Drew Holiday, LeBron James, Joel Embiid, and potentially Kevin Durant or Anthony Edwards. The team's depth and depth and versatility will be key as they face top international competition in Paris. Apparently, Steph Curry gets me <laughs> all jumped. Apparently so. Uh, I have a little tickle in my throat. And I was trying to, <laughs> trying to keep out of there. But all right. So we were just talking about the number of exhibition games and pre-Olympic <laughs> games. And this was the first of those playing uh, our neighbor to the north, Canada. Thoughts on the game? Thoughts on okay. so analysis? This is their second game. Uh, a couple of days ago, they had a game against the Team USA Select team, okay. which are players that are there to help the U.S. get ready with. This, so they're playing against the Select team. Um, okay. When I looked at this, yes, things that pop out, 17 turnovers, huge. Uh, the offense looked clunky, disjointed, but that's what these games are for. This is the first time these guys are playing uh, together, really. So uh, that will all improve. They'll all, you know, the offense will get smoother. It'll get smoothed out, especially by the time they make it get to London. I, I suspect they'll be. Uh, the offense will get ironed out. The turnovers will be kind of taken down to a minimum level. Those turnovers are going to get cut. I'm hoping they'll get cut in half. This was an important game for me. One, getting the news that Kawhi Leonard is out, you know, that's, that's kind of a shocker to the system. But then the fact that you're playing Team Canada, the the team that is most likely 
the one that if the U.S. doesn't win the gold medal, most people look at Team Canada as the team that would most likely, if it wasn't the U.S., it would be Team Canada that would win the gold. They're the biggest threat to the United States. Uh, they don't have a dream team roster like the U.S. has, but they have an NBA roster. You know, so they have, they, so from start, every one of their starters are all the solid players in the NBA. So, I mean, matter of fact, even Dylan Brooks, who is an NBA player, may be one of their weakest players. Uh, so they have a very solid team. And the fact that the matter is even disjointed offense, 17 turnovers. I felt like this was a very easy win for Team USA. Uh, it was very obvious that the most talent on the court was on Team USA's side. Uh, it was obvious to me that Team Canada really had no answer for Team USA. Uh, I felt like Team USA was better at every single spot, at every single point of this game. This game, I didn't think, was ever a threat. This is the team that may be the second best team in all of basketball uh in olympic basketball and they handled them with ease the teams to look out for number one is this team canada they're going to get better just like just like team usa off offense a little clunky a little awkward that won't that won't apply later on as things go on they'll get better but there are but then there are teams out there uh France with uh Rudy Gobert and Victor Wembanyama Germany Germany and team France they've been playing these teams have been playing together for quite a while Victor Wembanyama has been playing with team France for years Serbia, the Serbian team, has been playing for years. Some of these teams, they won't be as disjointed as Team Canada or Team USA because they've been playing consistent basketball for an extended period of time. And so that's the weakness to Team USA, not having enough time to work and get to be a true team like a team who has been playing together for for years, um, outside outside shots, you know, it's Greece is going to be interesting just because Giannis uh, is that impactful of a player that's going to make Greece very interesting. Uh, Luca playing for Slovenia is going to be interesting because of the impact. There are some teams out there that are going to be able to give the U.S. a run for their money. But when I looked at this game and I looked at how well they handled Team Canada, I feel more confident now than ever that Team USA is going to win this gold medal. Uh, unless, like we said, we keep losing players. And it could happen. We've already lost Kawhi Leonard. If there's any issue with Joel Embiid and he's out, the whole dynamic of Team USA is going to massively change. If Kevin Durant leaves, the whole dynamic of Team USA will change. That's the scary thing about this whole team that they put together. Now, they have some young people, and, and the main young person is is the Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards. And he he's showing he's right now, in my opinion, the best American player in, in the world. Um, he's young. Uh, he's durable. He's athletic. This, that's the future. He's, he's the present and he's the future because he's going to be playing a massive role and, and determining who's going to be going uh, to that gold medal round. I just don't understand why Jalen Brown did not get invited. That's the only one I would love to see Jalen Brown on the team. 
especially when you're worried about players that may not make it. That was my overall take on what I see with this game. You mentioned that disjointedness of not being mm-hmm. played together. And that's something for me, this maybe may will make you roll your eyes or maybe it'll make our, our viewers roll mm-hmm. their eyes because whenever I watch Olymp- the Olympic Games of these, these combined teams of people from lots of different NBA teams coming together to play in the Olympics, even when I think about trades, my muscle memory, I, I just wonder how often you're on the court and you see someone that you you played with last week but is now on the opposing team when we're talking about trades. Mm-hmm. Or now you're on the Olympics and you're used to trying to keep that ball away from everyone else that is now on your team. So I just think, <laughs> oh my gosh, the mental, the physical prowess is amazing, but the mental capacity to make those changes in your brain and i guess now i understand why there's so many exhibition games well no and i see that's in that one that, that's a that's a good question and it sounds kind of a base like ah, i don't know what i'm talking about or you don't know what you're talking about i understand why you asked that but i bring up forget about the nba forget about college and organized basketball players are used to playing pickup yeah. basketball all the time. Teams change all the time. Playing in AAU basketball, where, you know, who's ever in AAU, you got new teammates all the time. Uh, so players get used to playing with diff- different players uh, on a regular basis. Thinking about the All-Star game. Thinking about the offseason. Players get together and practice together quite often. So these things you you get used to that that that's that's that doesn't make a big a major difference and then and at least you have the same uniform whereas pick up basketball game i never know who you're playing with complete strangers <laughs> I yeah, you just get used, on my team you just get you just get used to it it's just the way it, just the way it is you know so there's my random question for you. For today. <laughs> Any concluding thoughts on Team USA as we go to our I just think they're good. I mean, as long as as long as they're healthy, I think Team at USA is going to win the gold medal. The only t- when it gets interesting is if an injury happens. Because if an injury happens, not only do they lose a player, but owners can get a little squirrely. You see one injury happens, then people start thinking about, hey, we just signed this guy for 200 million, or we got 150 million left on his contract, and we're getting nothing out of having him play Team USA. Are you really are you willing to risk it for games that doesn't matter? And it doesn't benefit. It's not like it's an exhibition game where you know, if you're the Phoenix Suns and you're selling out your arena and you got concessions and everything else and you're actually, it actually helps the organization. This doesn't do anything for the actual team. This is strictly for love of country and pride. And love of country and pride only goes so far when you're the guy writing that $150, $220 million contract. Just saying. Yeah. Hence the reason why I think Kawhi Leonard is not playing on Team USA. Sure. Well, we're going to take our next break for this episode. When we come back, sticking with basketball, but switching to the WNBA and um, Angel Reese's recent record breaker, <laughs> record breaking double double. I was going to say record breaking. Record breaking double double. You are tuned in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. 